Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlotthauer here, and welcome back to another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Monday, June the 16th, 2025. In today's tropical weather outlook and discussion, we're going to be monitoring the main development region for the potential for tropical development as we head into early July. There are tropical waves that we'll need to monitor then for the potential for wave development as these propagate from east to west. And then we will be keeping an eye on the Eastern Pacific for another additional tropical storm, if not even a powerful hurricane. This would be Tropical Storm Eric on our list of named storms as it develops and moves towards Acapulco as well as Puerto Escondido and Tehuantepec, Mexico. Any areas here in the Tehuantepec area need to be paying very close attention as this could change very erratically and quickly. Now, taking a look at the GOES-19 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And as we can see here, there is nothing really to watch out there in the main development region right now as we have stratocumulus clouds clouds overhead, meaning that the air out here is very stable, it is warm, and it is also really dry. Doesn't mean if we have dust or not, it is quite stable, and therefore we are not seeing any significant tropical wave development at this given time, but we all know as we go into July, that will quickly change, and even perhaps the last couple of days of June. While in the Eastern Pacific, we are monitoring our next area of interest, this is going to more likely become our next named storm, which will be Eric. Taking a look at the latest GFS model, the 12Z output that was released nearly a couple of hours ago, this is the global forecasting system. We're looking at a three plot look here on the image, and this indicates where we have any spin or vorticity at 850 millibars or 5,000 feet above the surface. And then in the lower parts of the atmosphere, that's where we look at our winds how strong they are and which way they're blowing from. And of course, our high contours give us a height of the atmosphere, basically a topographical map of where there's ridges of high pressure and where there's troughs of lower heights or disturbing weather. So when we put this into motion, simply we can see that the deep tropics here of the Atlantic, like the main development region, looking nice and quiet. And that's because we have a strong subtropical ridge of high pressure. The Azores high is going to remain really, really strong out there, okay? And this is a very stable weather pattern that we're generally looking at. But look what we got going on here on the GFS model, a nice broad trough of lower pressure. That is a strong tropical wave coming off of Africa on the 28th and the 29th of June. And then putting this into motion, we can see that that wave just collapses. It just falls apart while it wants to spin up stuff in the northwestern portion of the Caribbean and into the Gulf. This is the GFS fantasy lovers model, I guess, right? It just likes to go crazy with any little spin that we have that comes off of Venezuela. Yes, and even over, again, Honduras and Nicaragua. GFS has been just loving this area of the world with spinning up systems. Now, looking at the European model, we can see with what it's also showing, it's something very similar, strong Azores and Bermuda high in the Atlantic, keeping the trade winds pretty strong at least through the second to last day of June. But as we go into July, I do expect that this Azores high will begin to gradually weaken and we will slowly begin to lose the trade winds out here, at least at an above average scale. Now, even so, we do have stronger than normal trade winds in July. Doesn't mean that we won't see any tropical development out here in the main development region. All you need to see is westerly winds here, okay, in the uh, right around where we have um, the Cabo Verde Islands, and then you get trade winds that do this. And what this creates is a lot of vorticity along the intertropical convergence zone, or what we call the monsoonal trough. And that is a breeding ground for these systems that do want to develop. Now, I almost forgot about you all living in El Capoco as well as Puerto Escadito, including for Tehuantepec, Mexico. There is the potential here, and we'll talk more about this in a bit in the video, is a potentially tropical storm, if not Hurricane Eric, as it moves towards the southern Mexico coast here. This could be a big deal, very big deal. Heavy rainfall, strong winds, you name it. We'll be looking at the hurricane models here in just a bit on that location. But of course, when we do take a look at our Saharan dust forecast, there is low to medium amounts of dust out there. 
across the main development region of the Atlantic. We're not seeing as much brown on satellite, which is nice to see. Air quality is not too bad down here. Maybe a little bit on the rough side, but nothing like you could see on other Saharan air layer outbreaks. So that's going to continue to improve over the next five days. And in fact, looks pretty good for early next week as far as any dust goes. I mean, you'll have pretty much almost crystal blue skies and that's what you like to see in the tropics. But it won't be long before we get another push of that dust coming off of Africa as the Saharan dust outbreaks return over northern Africa with the help of that strong, strong upper level winds, low level winds coming out of the easterly direction, helping to put all that dust out into the Atlantic and possibly keeping things at bay at least through the 29th or the 30th of June. Now, of course, the good news about all of this is the National Hurricane Center in the Miami, Florida area is not expected any tropical development at least over the next seven days. And this map has looked awfully quiet for at least a good or pretty much all of June. We haven't had anything really out there to watch, which is the news that we all like to hear, but we got to understand this is pretty normal and this is not unusual. Even during very busy hurricane seasons, we can see a very inactive June. And what this means for sea surface temperatures across the Gulf and the Caribbean is, well, it's only going to get warmer. It's only going to warm up even quicker because we don't have any tropical waves, tropical storms, or hurricanes to mix things up, okay, very efficiently. And that means the heat is just going to pile up and it's going to be used in a bad way, I believe, once we get into September, especially when the sea surface temperatures are going to be at their warmest. So you can see here over the Gulf, sea surface temperatures are around 30.5 degrees Celsius on average with the loop current here even approaching almost 31 Celsius. That's about... I would say roughly about 83 to 85 degrees in Fahrenheit. That is pretty dang warm. All right, water temperatures here over the Bay of Youth are about 86 to 88 degrees in Fahrenheit. That's not what you want to see. Okay, and the upper ocean heat content here in the Gulf is utterly high. And when we extrapolate this with sea surface temperature anomalies here in the Caribbean and the Gulf, I mean, we are completely as far above average as you can possibly get here on a typical basis, especially over central Gulf and the northern Gulf and the southern Gulf running around about one to two degrees warmer than it should be this time of the year. The northwestern portion here of the Caribbean running about a degree warmer than it should, including for the western Gulf. So yes, this area is just ready for some intense systems if they develop in this area. And when they do, man, let's hope they don't. Now, with that being said, let's take a brief look here at the satellite imagery here on Invest 94E, as this has a very high chance of becoming not just a tropical storm, but actually a low grade hurricane and even maybe even a little higher than that. Wait until you see some of the hurricane models that I'm about to show you. So if you're on uh, Acapulco here in Mexico, as well as Puerto Escadito and Tehuantepec, Mexico, this is headed right for your area potentially, bringing a lot of heavy rainfall, substantial flooding, substantial damage perhaps, and of course some big time storm surge, especially if the, um, the system moves this way and then makes landfall and heads this way, bringing a lot of onshore flow here over the Tawanapec Bay, which is what you do not want to see. So this is a pretty serious situation that is unfolding, and not a lot of people are talking about this just because it hasn't developed yet. But once it does, I'm sure a lot of us, including myself here, will be talking a lot about this. And yeah, we might be doing a live stream on this as well. Yeah, I want to support my folks here in Mexico. So if you're along the coast here, this is for you. So now let's take a look here at the National Hurricane Center because this is what it's actually showing right now. A 90% chance that Invest 94E is going to develop into a tropical storm or even a hurricane here. And this is not what you want to see here, okay, from the National Hurricane Center. So I'm going to read this briefly. Offshore of Central America and the southeastern Mexico, 
And I'm just gonna actually click on this. Let's click on here and then it should, yeah, it should be right here. And I'm gonna blow this up for you all, okay? Showers and thunderstorms associated with a broad area of low pressure located offshore the coast of the Central America have now become a little bit better organized this morning. Environmental conditions appear very conducive for development of this system and a tropical depression is likely to form in the next day or so. While it moves west northwestward near the coast of El Salvador, Guatemala, and the southeastern Mexico, this includes again for Alcapoco as well as Puerto Escondido. Interests in these areas should monitor the progress of this system, regardless of development. Areas of very heavy rainfall are likely across portions of the Central America and southeastern Mexico during the next few days. So, again, even so, this does not become anything substantial, which I you know, when we look at the models, you'll agree with me on this. This is going to be a big issue. This really is. And I just hope and pray that people over here have their weather warnings enabled. They're watching my YouTube channel because that red area. Yep. That's right along the coast there of Mexico. And it's not doing something like this where it's just going to go way out to sea like we saw with Delilah. Well, Delilah did bring some indirect impacts such as some tropical storm force winds but this one's going to be much closer and it's going to be stronger which is the worst thing you could actually get so with that being said here's a look at the hmon model again for the eastern pacific on invest 94e not 94l because this is not in the atlantic e stands for east pacific and so this is what we have 1007 millibar system very well organized to say the least here, but not really making a very deep surface flow just yet. But guess what's gonna happen? In about 36 hours, this surface flow is gonna deepen a little bit more significantly. We even have tropical storm force winds at this given time, at this given point in the forecast. And then watch what happens here. In about 60 hours, we end up seeing a little bit of an area here of hurricane force winds as this moves again towards Alcapoco as well as Puerto Escadito in Mexico. And models are wiggling around with this. This still has the opportunity and potential of directly impacting Salina Cruz in the, uh, the Tawanapec Bay area. Okay, so this is still in the realm of a hit and miss situation, a striking distance with this system. All right, and again, this would be Eric. There's a lot of confidence that this is going to get named because we're going to be dealing with a tropical storm, if not a pretty intense hurricane here. And then look what happens. Look at this, 66 hours in about three days. Yeah, that is a 104 knot system. That's a major hurricane on the HMON hurricane specific model that I'm using here with a very solid donut here of hurricane force winds. So yeah, this has a high ceiling potential other than what we saw with Barbara, what we saw with Cosme, then what we saw with Elvin. Those were re relatively weak systems. This one on the other hand has a bit more of a punch. This has a bit more energy to work with and a bit more potential for more explosive intensification. And so as this gets closer, um, the pressure is down to 965. So that would be a high end category two hurricane, at least at my forecast. And then this makes landfall near the Alcapoco, near Puerto Escondido as a hurricane. And doesn't look strong though on land, right? Because there's a lot of tall mountains here, but we got to remember those tall mountains are really going to squeeze out a lot of the rainfall. And it's not just the HMON model going aggressive with this. If we look at different models, like the HWARF model, same system, it is even showing a pretty good intense um, hurricane here with winds here on a Category 2 spectral. And then when we look at the HAVS A model, a uh, similar outcome here, but again, only a lot further over here. This is why I think um, you're not out of the woods if you're in Salina Cruz, if you're in Tawanapec, Mexico, with that risk of a hurricane impacting you on the Haves A. And then on the Haves B model, it is also showing even further to the right here, impacting well to the east of Salina Cruz in Mexico in the Tawanapec Bay-ish area. So there's a lot of variability here, but one thing that is certain here is this is going to very much become a high-end tropical storm a low end hurricane at least at my very um least minimum forecast 
My most bullish forecast calls this to become a high-end category two with 110 mile an hour winds. And wind is not really gonna matter a whole lot here because there's gonna be a lot of rainfall associated with this system. So here's a look at the rainfall forecast on the HBON model. This is a simulated refla radar reflectivity forecast and look at all of that red surrounding that eye. This is a very intense hurricane and man, yeah, like right here, here's a nice good intense band. There's a potential we see water spouts, we see tornadoes with this. This is ugly. This is not good at all for southeastern Mexico. And this makes its way onshore, bringing some very, very heavy rainfall, uh, torrential downpours, substantial flooding, landslides, rock slides, that sort of thing. I don't like to be very aggressive with my forecast here, but man, the, this is a, a lot of tall mountains here. These are the Sierra Madre mountain chain here, and all that moisture is just going to get squeezed out in the lower parts uh, of these mountains and hilly locations, okay? So please take this seriously. And again, it's going to be Eric before long. But anyways, if you found this tropical weather outlook and discussion very helpful, detailed, and informative, Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification icon, hit the like button, and share this video with their family and friends on social media. As always, I try to make these videos on a daily basis, regardless if there is or isn't any tropical development out there in the Atlantic or even in the Eastern Pacific, because again, being consistent here is always key. And that's why you all need to please subscribe to the channel to get latest daily updates here on the tropics, including live stream updates and a lot more. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.